Hey everyone, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make explosive drums like Lauren. I'm going to be giving away the project file and samples from this video in the description for free, so make sure to pick that up. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first layer we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. And so the way that I made the kick is basically I layered three layers together and then there's a bit of processing on the group. So the first layer we have in here is this 808 which sounds like this. And I'll play this without any processing actually so you can hear just what the dry sound sounds like. So this is a sample I started with. I just took this 808 and I shortened it a bit, and then I put it in here, and then this is mostly just doing like the low end of the kick. Like the goal here with these layers, and you'll see more when I show you the other two, is just to kind of like have each one be doing one thing so that they all come together to make one big thing, if that makes any sense. So this is just doing like the low end kind of thump of the kick. Next layer we have is this tom, which sounds like this. So, this obviously might seem very quiet. You probably didn't really pick it up when you heard the kick on, like, all three layers together. But this one is actually pretty important, and I'll explain why in a bit when I show you the processing on the master of this kick. But for now, all it is is basically just this tom sample. That one, I took it in here, and I pitched it down a bit. And then I put it through this EQ just to focus on, like, this sort of low almost like lows range, but like between about 100 and 200 hertz. Here's what it sounds like without this, and then with it. So yeah, again, that's in there. I'll explain why it's in there, but it's definitely a very important layer. Um, then the last layer we have in here is this punch layer, which sounds like this. So this is just a simple, like I took this kind of punchy, quick kick. And I just put it in here, and then you can see I've cut out the low end to make room for the 808, and then I've boosted the highs a little bit as well, just to kind of give it more click. Because one thing about Lauren's kicks is they have very nice high end and very nice low end, so I wanted to use this layer to just give that like really start of the sound, like the impact, a little bit more high end. So then on the group, here's what it sounds like with no processing. And then the first effect that I have here is the saturator, which is set like this. So you can hear that's like beefing the sound up a bunch, just giving it a lot more power and giving it a little bit more grit as well. Basically what I have here is I just have a bit of drive and then I have the color on the sinoid fold, so it's just a little bit stronger than the analog clip. And yeah, then after that I have this audio effect rack. So what this audio effect rack is doing is actually a pretty important effect. It's giving it some reverb. Here's what it sounds like. There's without it, and then with. So you can hear this is what's giving it like that deep kind of like dungeony, I guess you would say, like warehouse kind of reverb. And so the way that I made this was actually just kind of similar to how you would make a techno reverb kick. Which, if you don't know, basically the way you make a techno reverb kick is you take, you basically split your sample or your sound and just have two versions of it. In this case, I use the audio effect rack to do that. So we got a dry one with no effects, and then on the wet one, what you have is a completely wet reverb going into some distortion to boost up the low end. And then finally, just an auto filter to just focus on that low end and just get the rumbly part and nothing else. So that's what I did here. I just basically made this like a techno kick. And what it does is it gives it this really nice, like, kind of ringing out sound, which is a lot more organic than if you just had, like, a really long sample. Like, this sounds a little bit more, like, explosive and kind of big. And it just has that cool kind of vibe that Lauren has in his kicks. So I think that this is how he does it, unless he's just using, like, some samples that have naturally really cool reverb or something. I believe this is how he's getting like those big kind of like long kick tails. So then after that, I just have this OTT on here. Um, you don't know OTT, it's just a uh, preset. For Ableton's multiband dynamics, it stands for over the top. And it's just a really strong multiband compression that kind of like brings everything up at the end. Basically what I've done is I've just brought it on here and I brought the amount down. So here's what it sounds like just stock. So yeah, a little bit too much. So I just dialed that back. So you still get that kind of like extreme compression. It's just in the background and it's adding to the sound as opposed to like taking over. So that's the kick. The next thing that I have here is this little reverse kick, which sounds like this. 
So this is really simple. All I did was I just recorded the kick onto a new audio track. Um, basically, you just make an audio track and then set the input to this kick track. And then if we arm it for recording and hit record. There we go. I just recorded like that. And then what I did was I just took that sample over here and then I reversed it. And so what this does is it just gives it like that kind of reverse going into the kick. Like that big thing that kind of causes a lot more anticipation for the next bar. So this is an effect Lauren uses a ton. He does this in like Acid Rain, all over that album, all over his newer work as well. And yeah, it's a really good technique to use. Like I said, it really makes like a lot of tension in the beat for that one to hit. Now the only thing that you kind of got to do when you do this is you'll see I use the fades. And you kind of have to do a bit of detail work with the fades. You can see here at the end, I've sort of like cut off this little part. That's very important because what happens if you don't do that is that transient is going to like go into the next kick transient and it's not going to sound that smooth. I mean you can hear there, like it's not a huge deal, but you can kind of hear the clicking. But if we give it that little thing there, it's like, it's still doing the reverse, but then it cuts out right at the last moment. So then when that kick does hit, it's still got all the power, essentially. So the next thing that we've got going on here is this clap, which sounds like this. So this is very similar to the kick. It's three layers, and yeah, they're just kind of three layers that really accentuate each other nicely, and then a little bit of processing on the master. So the first layer we've got here is this snap, which sounds like this. So really nothing too crazy, just like a pretty organic, nice, kind of like punchy snap sound. I put it through a bit of reverb. You can see I've got a pretty low dry wet and then a pretty long decay time. And there's a lot of space between these claps or these snares or whatever you want to call them. So you can kind of have a little room to play around with the reverb. And that's what Lauren does a lot. Like he'll have these kind of bigger reverbs on these claps like this. So then the next layer we have here is this stick or side stick or whatever you want to call it. it sounds like this. So this is just a recording of like a side, this, like a drumstick just hitting something, and then I'm just putting through a bit of reverb here. I believe I also, yeah. So you can see it's just like a, it's just like a, a drumstick sample, and then like I said, it's going through a bit of reverb. This gives it like a nice kind of like crack, like a nice kind of like like punch in the mid range. If that makes any sense. I know Lauren uses these a lot in his music, and yeah. So then the last layer that we have here is this clap thing, which sounds like this. So this is just like a nice kind of punchy clap. Um, I wanted to have something that didn't have some reverb on it. And this is also adding a bit of high end because if you listen to these two, they really don't have a lot of high end. So having this thing kind of adds some nice high end. So then on the group, what I've got is I've got a saturator, first of all, here. So you can see I've given it a bit of drive. And I've got it on the wave shaper mode. And I just kind of turned that up a bit to give it some more power. Here's what it sounds like without it. And then with it, so you can hear it's really giving it that like impact and making it hit a lot harder. And then finally, I just have an EQ8 cutting out the low end to kind of clean it up a bit. So that's the clap. The next thing that we have here is the Foley percussion, which sounds like this. So what this is, is basically it's just some percussion made with like some Foley sounds that just kind of like accentuates the beat, you know? Like this on its own is a little boring. kind of simple. When we add stuff like this, it gives it that extra little bit of like flavor, I guess. So the first thing that we have in this layer here is this little thing, which sounds like this. I'm going to play it with the clap. So it's basically just this little percussion reverse thing that goes here and it hits like right before the clap. And it goes every other time. You can see like if we're counting this in bars, the first bar doesn't play and the second bar doesn't play. Third bar, it doesn't play. Fourth bar, it does play. I also realized I said doesn't play for the second bar, but it does play in the second bar. So like I said, it's just kind of playing every other time, and it gives some nice like anticipation for the next bar. So I just made this by taking this little sound, that little percussion, and I just reversed it here and then lined it up with that, with that clap. And yeah, very similar to what I did with the reverse kick. Then the next thing that we have in here are these two little percussion sounds, which sound like this. So these are playing on the up piece. It's kind of like. 
They kind of make you like bob your head a little bit. Like it gives it the kind of groove. Like Lauren has a lot in his music. So the way that I made this is just by layering together two little Foley sounds. We have this one and then this one. So these two just kind of play together. Like I like layering them together because it gives it an extra sort of bit of just kind of like nice texture, you know, like when you put sounds together, you can create something really interesting that you wouldn't have gotten or even probably even wouldn't have thought to try if you hadn't done it. So I really like layering things together like this. So then on the group of all this Foley percussion, we've got a little bit of processing. I've got this EQ8 cutting out a bunch of low end and honestly a lot of the mid range as well. Just sort of clean it up and make room for the other things. And then that's also cutting off a little bit of high end. It was just a little sharp. I wanted it to be a little bit darker sounding. And then after that, we just have this reverb, which has a very small size and a very short decay time. So it's just giving it a little bit of space. You can hear it's not a lot. But if I turn it off, and then turn it on, you can hear like it's kind of just bringing everything to life a lot more. So then the last layer that we have here is this little cymbal thing, which sounds like this. So it's kind of playing in the background and giving the beat that like pulse. It's making it feel more intense like at right before the clap hits. You can hear like, again, similar to what the Foley percussion is doing, this is kind of making you want to like bob your head a little bit more. So the way that I made this, sam with this thing was by taking this cymbal sample, like a crash or a china cymbal or whatever it may be, and I took it in here and then I just reversed it like this. And then I just copied that a bunch of times. And like I said, this just gives it like some nice kind of background flavor, you know? Like if we turn this off. It's cool, but it's not as intense and as powerful as this is. You know, like the way I like to think of all this kind of stuff is like this kick and this clap. That's like communicating what we want it to. Like that's giving us like the vibe, like it's a slow kind of chilled out like dark beat. And then these other things sort of like help solidify that vibe and help like kind of tell the story more if that makes any sense. So this is just one of those like extra ear candy layers. And then what I did after I had it in here was I put a little bit of effects on it. So first we have this grain delay. You can see I have the time set really fast and the dry wet's at about 50%. I got the pitch all the way up an octave and I've got a little bit of spray on there. So that's just kind of giving it like some nice overtone. It's also giving it a bit more high end. There's with and without it. You can hear, yeah, it's just kind of adding a little bit of extra stuff to the sound. It's kind of like layering it with other sounds, I guess. Um, then after that, there's 70 EQ8, cutting out the low end. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. You know, like I said, it's just sort of a nice background thing that like plays off the kick and the clap. And with that, that's also going to be it for today, guys. So I just want to show you guys some techniques on how to do drums, kind of in the style of Lauren. I've gotten a bunch of requests for this one after I made the other Lauren tutorials. So yeah, make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and make sure to like this video, as well as subscribe. You can get the project file and samples from this video for free in the description as well. So make sure to go check that out. Thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.